Um, okay, let's click over to here. And why is that all jacket? There we go. Jesus, everything just trying to trying to mess up tonight. And away we go. Welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 113 for Thursday, the second day of February 2017. This is a show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and I actually have an official intro tonight. Founding producer of the award-winning Daily Tech News Show, lover of books, Star Wars, and Edward R. Murrow Awards, producer for the new podcast Make Me Smart, and host of Tell It Anyway, Jenny Josephson. How are you tonight? What's up? I'm so excited to be here with my chat realm and my ritual misery and my unrestricted language. I really <laughs> am just pumped. Uh, just so awesome. you know, just to be clear, I don't write intros for just anybody. Oh, uh, it was <laughs> a really good intro. And I write a lot of intros. So like thumbs up. Sweet. Seal of approval. Moving on. How has your week been, Kent? <laughs> Man. Oh geez, it's it's been crazy, but but you know what? I did do something fun this last weekend. We went to see the movie Split, the mm. new Shyamalan film. Okay, yeah, yeah. I and I, I I've literally heard nothing about it. So I gave up on Shyamalan a long time ago, especially when he came out with that horrendous Airbender movie. Because I'm a huge fan of Avatar: The Last Airbender, and I was super thrilled to hear that they were making a live action version of it. And then Shyamalan came out with that pile of crap, and I was like, you know what? Done with you. Uh, you know, he was kind of, I always thought he was kind of on a decline anyway after his first few movies. Well, I think Shyamalan's back. This movie Ooh. was actually pretty good, and Lucas and I recorded an episode of Film Zone. So if you want to know my full thoughts on that, go check that out. Film Zone on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Nice, nice. Um, I intentionally haven't heard or seen anything about it other than what you just said, and I don't normally do that for movies, but but I think it was, uh, uh, who was it? Jeff Kanata convinced me not yeah, to know anything I, about it and just, just walk in and watch it, so I've been kind of waiting until this weekend to go see yeah. it. Yeah, Je right on. Jenny, have you seen the movie Split? I haven't yet. Matt, my husband, saw it, and tell it anyway, co-host, and uh, he was very happy with it. Awesome. That's now, all I'm gonna say. He told he filled me in because like I wasn't gonna go see it because uh, I am also done with the Shyamalan, uh, <laughs> with M Night Shyamalan, and uh, 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 maybe I'll see it when it comes out on cable. But uh, Matt was really he's pretty pumped about it. Nice. Now you had something yourself to be pumped about this week. I did. Okay, so uh, last week I launched a brand new podcast that I've been working on for a long time. Like, you know how in Chat Realm and, and Dime Club when you're like, I want to do a podcast, and you could put one together in a night? <laughs> so <laughs> I worked on this one for like nine months. Like, I could have alternately made a human, uh, <laughs> but instead <laughs> we made a podcast, and it's called Make Me Smart, and it, it is uh, co-hosted by Kyra Zdahl of Marketplace and Ms. Molly Wood of The Buzz Out Loud. Um, and it's really fun. And so, like, last week it premiered, and it did really well. And then this week we had our episode two, and it went to number one on the business charts and hung out there for two days before finally being resupplanted by another show. Uh, and, oh, my gosh, you guys. Like, that was – I literally had one of those, like, driving in the car, listening to music super loud, like – like unironic fist pump moments when I saw that. Cause I was so like for something that you work on for so long to actually do well. And I know, like I know that iTunes algorithm um, favors newness, 
but I don't care. <laughs> uh, for the well, record, that's... we've been working on this show for two and a half years, and we still haven't hit number one. So we understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's that's hard. Really awesome. And I've listened to the show, Jenny. It is really, really good. And the highest level of production that I've heard on a podcast in a very long time. Oh, okay. So I tell so... you. So Kent is uninitiated in the BOL realm. Like he's listened to a few Ooh. episodes, but he wasn't there for it. Like he wasn't. Well, neither was I. I missed oh. the boat. <laughs> yeah, he, he he missed the bull boat. Um, he <laughs> he's tried to listen to a few episodes of BOL, but it, it some of the episodes don't like. I'll, I'll go through and talk, try to tell him how awesome it is. And I understand that part of the awesomeness of Buzz Out Loud was the continuing saga of yeah of everything going on. Um. To have Molly Wood in a podcast, have her in a show where she's her unfettered self, like she's not scripted. She might have a few notes, but she's not scripted. She's out there, and then the chemistry she has with Kai is very similar to the chemistry she has with Tom, and it just flows so well. And it's so amazing to hear her on a podcast again. And I'll admit, with uh, I'll, I'll I'll agree with Ken, the production value is amazing. Like I don't, man, I wish we, I wish I could make podcasts like that. <laughs> I'll <laughs> right. tell you what. So I'll tell you what, like part of look leaving, not to get like too far down the podcast rabbit hole, but the hardest thing about leaving the Daily Tech News show in in a full time capacity was the that spirit of invention and the spirit of of we can do anything, and also like actually working with Tom Merritt, which is just one of the most amazing experiences of my life. Um, but the the cool thing about going to work at public radio, besides actually getting to work with Molly, is is I did learn that production value. Now, a lot of people's work goes into making a podcast that sounds that good. Like the studio is amazing. And we have these awesome engineers who also compose the opening and the closing music. Like, like, like it, it, we have, I have a senior producer who's a genius and like it, 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 not to mention my two hosts who are just like conversational magic. And so you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into making it that good. Uh, and, and it's been sort of like humbling to learn. Uh, but, you know, it also took nine months to get it out the door. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well worth the wait. It's it's a really, really good show. Oh, thanks, you guys. Can everybody please listen to it at least once? Because uh, it was fun being number one in business. We made it up to number 14 in the overall charts. And mm. like I could use all of diamond club just like once to like yes, boost absolutely. it back up just once like the just let me borrow for once the power <laughs> of night attack i've been on it i've been on the movie draft please uh just once go listen to that show i'm i'm, I'm glad you said that because um anytime we have a, a a host on that has more than just a few program uh, you know a few things going on like you you've got a long history of radio and tv and stuff in my search for you, in, in, in researching to make sure that I, there were no big balls I was going to drop and not know what the hell somebody was talking about, because Kent likes to find shit I don't, I don't know about, <laughs> um, I found your IMDb entry. Uh-oh. <laughs> so did I, actually. <laughs> well, what's, what's, is it the right Jenny Josephson, though? <laughs> um, pretty sure. Pretty sure. Uh-oh. Uh, what does it say? <laughs> it oh, is, no. It is your appearance on Night Attack. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. I was like, oh my God, what did I do? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, and, and you are the second Jenny Josephson. Jenny Josephson? Yes. Two. It, on yes, IMDb. there is another. So, there is another. <laughs> so there, there you go. For everybody watching the stream right now, everybody watching the video, there's her entrance with one, one appearance as herself on Night Attack. That's so nice. I thought that was hilarious when I saw that at work today. That's I mean, awesome. I mean uh, when I saw that on my lunch hour, uh, independently searching people up, not wasting government dollars at all. Oh, um, <laughs> so wait, uh, uh, yeah, I love night attack. I love the, like, if there's anything I learned right from my two years, uh, working for Tom and sort of like being on the edges of like the diamond club and night attack and, and, and cord killers and all that is like, man, did I come away indoctrinated in the power of a strong community and, and, and how valuable that is and how humbling it is to try to recreate that somewhere else. And uh, it's not like I didn't have respect for this entire 
crew of people and what you have all been able to accomplish. But boy, do I have it now even more. Woo. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we uh, we this this whole show we were we were getting like twenty downloads a week, and then we came to Diamond Club, and we officially we were folded into the machine that is Diamond Club, and uh, yeah, it, it's we, we're doing we're doing amazing compared to that now. Yeah, we complain yeah, about if, it, but if we if we took this show somewhere else, like I don't even like, yeah, we'd be back down to like ten downloads a week or something. <laughs> you need a community. You need support and. And really, I, I'm just so, so impressed by just what you guys are all able to accomplish. Gentlemen, ladies, the whole deal. Um, yep. So it this last week, I went down to Kenai. And Kent, you know, we uh, uh, last week I was down at Kenai doing the show on a Thursday night. And we'd just done some basketball and some more basketball. And I got to tell you, man, we did some more basketball when we came back. On Saturday, they had a game. I stayed home and watched babies, uh, the one-year-old and the four-year-old. And then on Tuesday night, we went out and watched another game. In this game, we had a busted nose, two busted teeth, a torn ACL, and that was all oh. just on my daughter's team. Oh, uh, man. It was, it was uh, ponytails and elbows. That's all you saw the entire game. <laughs> and both of my daughters got beat up a little bit. And one of them actually took one of their girls out, so I'm kind of proud of that. Um, and uh, <laughs> I even got honorable mention by other, the other team's coach that I should keep my mouth shut during games because I was not very polite. <laughs> well, uh, I, is this the first time that you've been reprimanded? Uh, well, the coach said That's something the, the refs part did of not. The surprise. L last, last time, last when I was down at Kenai, they had made an announcement during the halftime of one of the games when I was in the bathroom that the parents should calm down and shouldn't be, you know, should should cheer on the sportsmanship and, and shouldn't be yelling at the refs and the players. I'm, I'm pretty sure that was, might have been <laughs> Shut <ended>. up, ref. <laughs> Would you shut up? <laughs> I told them they needed to change the fly paper because the bullshit was getting th thick. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, <laughs> yeah, probably a little out of place at a high school um, game. Yeah, whatever. I, I, it's high school though. It's not like they're not saying, saying this, this stuff anyway. Um, so that was, that's, that's pretty much wrapped up my week. Um, yeah, that's, <laughs> Oh geez. Hey, have, have you guys seen the show, the OA on Netflix? Oh my God. Yes. Mm. I just started watching it the other night. I'm dude. I'm it's in, but Holy crap. Holy crap. What, what, that, what, that show. Oh, so good. The only it OA was, I know I, is old Academy it, park back in Oxford, Indiana. Right. Oh, I was gonna make that connection. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Our little stoner so, park. I mean, uh, park we hung out at randomly uh, <laughs> before joining the military. Um, huh? The first way that that show's title caught my eye was because it was called the OA. And when Amos and I were in high school, we we went to high school together. Mm -hmm. uh, the park that we would go to, like, get away from people Everybody? for whatever we were gonna do. Um, was called Old Academy Park, and we called it OA for mm. short. And Nobody I'm, else. Did I'm telling call it you, that. if you just needed to and, sit down and listen to an hour of Pearl Jam on your tape deck while swinging alone oh. and not talking to anybody, that was the spot. Yeah. Uh, maybe it was just me, but that was my spot. So, <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Everybody anyway, needs an so hour of Pearl Jam whenever, on a swing by themselves at least once in life. I'm just saying. <laughs> So whenever we were saying that we were going to go to this park, we would always say, let's go away. We were saying, oh, A, oh. but people thought we were saying away. And it was almost was like code to us. So it was yeah. kind of funny. Our, our parents would get mad at us for saying, like, oh, where are you headed? Away. What? You yeah. need to give me a good answer. <laughs> you, don't, uh, but, you don't just so say you're going anyway, away. That's not telling me anything. So this show, The OA, Oh my god! I didn't think a whole lot about it at first because I was like, okay, this is just a, another one of the millions of, of Netflix original shows. But then on, I think it was on Current Geek last week, somebody mentioned that it was in a shared universe with Stranger Things. No, that's not true at all. Okay, well, regardless, that hooked me because I was like, wait, Stranger Things is one of my favorite things of all time. So I started watching it. And even if it's not part of the shared universe, the show is absolutely amazing. So here's what's interesting about that show. And my husband, we had no knowledge of it whatsoever. It just kind of stealth dropped on Netflix. But my husband works in a comedy writer's room. And so people were 
talking about it. This one guy was like, no, you have to watch it. 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 And so finally we're like, all right. And we were warned that the first 50 as in five O minutes of the show, you, you might be like baffled or slightly bored or just like, what is going on? And then at like the five O minute mark, it blows your GD ever loving mind. And, and it's true. And I might add, that's when the opening credits start. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, 50 it's the minutes longest in. cold open in like the history of television. <laughs> it's so good. That's all I'm going to say about it. That's yes. all I'm going to say. So, I'm done so, as well. So 50 you, minutes of cold open. want to know about the show, you got to watch it. 50 minutes of cold open, a minute yep. and a half intro, and then what, two lines of dialogue and credits? <laughs> Oh, it's just amazing. It's, oh, it's just oh it's God. set up for episode two. It's now, just it, oh. Now so I gotta good. watch that and finish Man of the High Castle season two. What? Mm-hmm. Like I don't have. And it's time only like it's it. only like eight episodes or something. So it's not like it's it's a major investment. That's what they said about uh, Stranger Things, but it took me two weeks to watch that because every time I got halfway through an episode, it just got I got to thinking too much and overthinking the show, and not just <laughs> appreciating it for the simplistic. Uh, 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 amazingness that it was. Oh, yeah. Well, th- this is a thinker too. This this one will get you thinking. Yeah. So it um, might take you a few weeks to get through. <laughs> you, you, you know what gets me thinking is Marvel. Like. Oh yeah. The entire MCU. Now I've got family pressure to get me to watch it. You're you're always mentioning it, Kent. How oh you should just go ahead and start because you're eventually gonna have to watch it anyway. Like yep. that. So all I'm ever getting pressured by is Marvel. Like everybody wants me to watch the Marvel. And then I look at the show notes, and Jenny, she's celebrating the Marvel in a different way. Yeah. So <laughs> here's the deal with me and Marvel, which is, look, I, I grew up knowing that comic books existed, but they, I was much more into TV and movies, and that's how my geekdom was expressed, right? Like, I wasn't going to comic book stores. Um, and then... I did get into Marvel through the movies and those movies became like such good friends to me, you know, and they did so much so well, I just on a movie level and, and in bringing a wider universe successfully and, and complicated storytelling to what otherwise is just like a tentpole blockbuster. um, And we're so patient about developing their universe. Right. And I, people are always like, well, you should read the comics. You should read the comics. And I was like, guys, I could never catch up. I don't have space in my house for all the books. Like, there's no way. Mm-hmm. And I felt intimidated by it. But then again, like, all, all the intelligence I get in the world is from my husband's writer's room. Um, there's this writer in there who's, like, a huge comic book fan, lifelong. He lent me a couple key uh, series from Marvel. And then... Finally, it was the Star Wars comics that got me to subscribe to Marvel Unlimited on my very old iPad because I was loving all like the sort of the one off like Lando or Princess Leia or Han Solo that they have. It's just like five episodes bound up into one and it's complete story and it's great. But there are like 28 Star Wars comics comics that started in 2015 and I was like I'm never going to find these all on Amazon and so $99 a year I went on Marvel Unlimited and man is it great I love reading comic books on the iPad I love it more than I love it uh, more than I love reading it in the books which is heretical but like you don't have to bend the page back you're not missing art in the thing like it is so cool. And also, there's like 17,000 comic books on there. <laughs> so, I might know. have to look into that. I, I used to be a, a real avid comic book reader when I was in high school. Like, that took up so much of my time reading them, going to comic book stores, talking about comics with my friends. It, it was pretty much all encompassing for me. But over the last, I don't know, decade and a half to two decades, I've, I've, rarely picked up a comic book i need to get back into that in fact when i saw that you had star wars comics in the show notes i was thinking about pulling a tom Merritt mm-hmm. and having some of my old marvel like original run marvel comic star yep. wars comics sitting right here so i could show them up and i completely forgot to do that <laughs> i um you know i have a bunch i bought a bunch for the 2015 run and 
One thing I'll say that separates these Star Wars comic books from any that I'd ever read before is that, man, they are taking such care with the storyline. Like, there are overlapping arcs from different, like, the Darth Vader series. They mm. have crossovers, but it all makes sense. It's, like, really well done. It, it is high-level comic book storytelling of characters that we love. And, and you know, I was... Uh, we do this show, Garrett Weinzerl, Tom Merritt, and I do this show called Let's Talk About Star Wars. And um, I was pissed when they took the entire extended universe and, like, legends did, you know? Yeah. I, and that, it took me a while to recover from that. I really didn't want to deal with any of the printed media for Star Wars. I was like, I will watch the movies. I'd be very happy. Mm. Um, I'd be psyched if they came up with a TV show, although not if they do to it what they've done to Mar Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Once Upon a Time and all that other stuff where they just jerk these characters around until they have no meaning. Um, <laughs> but, but oh my gosh, like the, the, the books have been great. Like the, the graphic novels and the comic books have been great. It is so, so good. Yeah, well, they've got that story group, the Star Wars story group, I think is what they're called. It's basically like a, a council of continuity. Like a it, Jedi it, council of continuity? Yeah, exactly. Uh... And, but I, I think they, because they tried that before when, when they started the expanded universe, but they started getting a little off the rails, I think, with the expanded universe stuff. I think it just got to be, there, there was too much of it and not a small enough... Um, council i guess yeah they kept it all together and with this new one with the reset it it seems like they're just they're very very tight with it and yeah. they they make sure that the movies the cartoons the comics the novel they make sure it all jives it's airtight it's yeah. airtight and it's really good and all i need is my mara jade that's all <laughs> i need I got my Grand Admiral Thrawn. I got yep. my Princess Leia. And that's all I need is some Mara Jade. I wouldn't mind seeing Shizor. Mm, that would be cool. Is that how you pronounce Zixor? Yeah, Shizor. Yeah, Shizor. <laughs> okay. I, I, know I never knew that. Because, I know that because the author of this book, Steve Perry, was on our show. Oh, <laughs> and, cool. <laughs> yeah. I read Shadows of the Empire. I love that. Yep. I. I the Timothy Zahn ones were my favorite, but mm. uh, but Shadows of the Empire I definitely remember. That is so cool. <laughs> Amos, what about you? Are you a comic book guy? Uh, I read Spawn, <laughs> <laughs> which led me into Angel. Oh well. Um, and both of them were awesome, but it was mostly the artwork that pulled me in. That's the one, the big detractor that yeah. I had when I was looking at at comics when I was little was just the artwork sucked in my mind. And then, then Image came along, and all the artwork was just amazing. And then I joined the military, and my comics got uh, scattered throughout the universe. And of well, course. I, I still have a stack of them about this big over there, but that's about it. Yeah. So, so it, instead of reading comic books, what would you do, Geeky, this week? Um, I re rejiggered Quasal because I screwed it up, my little Quasal server. What's that? Uh, it's it's a, a IRC client. It's a persistent IRC client. client. So... Uh, I, you know, it, it's, it's always on, it's always connected to chat realm and, um, I screwed up my server, so I had to redo it. Oh my God, you guys, Alexa just started talking to me and almost had a heart attack for <laughs> no reason. Just started talking. I was like, who's in the house? <laughs> I was um, just terrified. I don't know if you saw my face. I was like, what's happening in the kitchen? <laughs> oh my gosh. I didn't mean to Alexa interrupt, but I was like scared for my life. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, I'm sorry, Quasel. Go you, ahead. You, you see, you see, oh. mine, mine is is red ringed, so <laughs> I mute it before I do anything in here. Um, yeah. So uh, Quasel, and then uh, did, I redid all the budgets and stuff like that. The little spreadsheets that my wife and I use for all the bills, all that kind of thing, and really started digging into that, which kind of reminded me of the same pain that I had to go through when we were finalizing EPRs this week. And here's here's the grand point of all of this. This is the the epitome of it. ASCII character two thousand nine. It is a short space. They're using the short space because on the EPR form, which is our annual review in the military in the Air Force, they only have so many characters that you can use, and they want it to be as little uh, white space at the end of the line as possible. 
So you always overreach it, and you try to cut in the words, try to figure out exactly how to reduce it down to the proper proper line size, and you always one character off. So what people are doing is they're replacing the full size space with these mini spaces, because oh. when it prints the paper, it looks fine. But then you can like slowly inch it in just a little bit each time, and finally get that last letter on the line. And you know what? That's just part of the ignorance or the idiocy that is uh, paperwork in pretty much any job you're going to have, right? But what they were doing is they were type going into Word, typing in the letters 2009, hitting enter, going up, deleting the 2009, and then selecting the little leftover carriage return space that was in there oh. and using that to paste in because 2009 was a special code. And it took me half an hour to get people to understand that 2009 is just the ASCII code. If you go into the character map in Windows, you can go right there, select it, copy it, and paste it all you want. Oh, my God. It, you You know... <laughs> That's like a whole episode of like Office Space, the TV show. <laughs> <laughs> that oh is just God. terrifying. So I'm literally sitting in this conference room while they're doing this copy thing, and they can't quite get it right because they can't highlight the right. And a, like my vein right here was bursting, <laughs> my thumbs were in my eyes. Like I couldn't, I couldn't function. Like I just shut down for a little while, and finally oh. went through. Um, oh, oh, so. So irritating. So that, that was my geeky thing for this week, just knowing the character map exists, because apparently that's lost knowledge. Uh, <laughs> geez, man. That, that's one of the things. Dude, I love hanging out with you. I love talking with you, but I would not want to work with you, because I can only <laughs> imagine the pain of your coworkers and your supervisors. <laughs> yeah. Oh my yeah. Uh, may maybe. Maybe. <gasps> um, oh, my Hey, uh, as far as I can tell, it's about time for this. Oh, wait. No, it's not because I realized an ironic thing today. Jenny Josephson, who has a podcast called Tell It Anyway, <laughs> let us know that she's not too fond of TED Talks all over so much because there's too much talking and not enough just just stuff. Just too much <laughs> talking. And I couldn't pass no, up the know. opportunity to ask you, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is going Speaking on with of that? Tell it anyway. Jenny, <laughs> could you describe anyway. why you're a hypocrite? Uh, uh, I'll tell you why. Live because, on DiamondClub.tv. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> because I, I think with TED Talks, it's like it, it gave it had such an allure of of like mystery and flash, and I was just like, this is just college lectures. You know what I mean? Like, and they're good and and they're interesting to me, but they have like such a like a like a marketing gloss on them and one thing i will say about tell it anyway when we finally get around to really doing it again because oh my god matt's been working 80 hours a week and it's so oh hard to do them and i've been working you know normal human hours um and one of us has to like be working less to be able to do the <laughs> podcast but it like breaks our heart that we're not doing that show because we love it so um but uh uh I, I we like talk like this, like people just sitting around telling a story and interrupting each other and using all the words and like I don't need a keynote spreadsheet thing behind me and flashy <laughs> sizzle and walking the stage and having a powerful open. Come on, give me a break, <laughs> Ted. <laughs> They are a little bit up their own ass, I think. So, so. That's basically what I was trying to say. <laughs> like, enough. Just so, give, so, me, so for you, give me the story. For you, TED stands for theatrical, theatrical Education Discussion. Or, yeah. Or, or what would the D be? This on theatrical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. So speaking of Tell It Anyway, I listened to Tell It Anyway for the first time this week. Oh, How is I listened that so possible, man? I know. Well, I listen to so many podcasts. I barely have time to listen to my cue. And Tell It Anyway has been there as something that I want to listen to and I just never got around to. Well, you well, have like 36 week... episodes to listen to now. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm so excited. <laughs> so this week I was like, well, Jenny's going to be on the show. I guess I should listen to some of her stuff. Uh, no, I've, I've actually I've, I've listened to, to um, let's talk about Star Wars from the very beginning. And I've you know, caught probably just about all of your guest appearances everywhere else. Uh, but for whatever reason, tell it anyway, I'd never gotten around to. I love, love, love that show. Oh, it's so that both and makes I me also, happy and breaks my heart. <laughs> and I also love your dad. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> episodes ago. And your dad 
is the coolest dude. I want to hang out with him. <laughs> he is really the coolest dude. Like for those who don't know, I'll give you the the one minute on Larry Josephson. My dad um, actually helped create a certain kind of public radio before there was an NPR. So my dad stumbled in. He was an engineer at IBM. He hated it in Poughkeepsie. He kept coming down to visit and volunteer at this public radio station, um, Pacifica radio station called WBAI in New York. And this was in the 1960s and somehow ended up doing a morning show eventually. And he was part of this group of sort of radio rebels that really sort of blew up the sound of traditional AM and FM radio, like really polished hosts and, and Murray the K and, you know, like all this stuff, like they, they, like they wanted to blow up radio and they, they did this guy named Bob Fass um, is really the guy who launched it, this free form radio. And it's, it's interesting because when everybody's like, well, this podcast was on before this and this podcast started free form radio, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you gotta go all the way back. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, it's sort of amazing to, to hear him tell stories um, even if they are crass as hell, <laughs> he, leave, he had, you know, he is like best friends with Spalding Gray. Like he could have told you a story about his his friends Spalding Gray, and instead he told you a story about going to Diamond. Li like I can't even. Yeah, uh, uh, please should listen to the episode. <laughs> yeah, go listen to it. Oh my god. Um, I, oh, I want to know. Me. I want to know how did Tell It Any Anyway start? Like, because I, I, I remember you talked about it. When it, when it was first ginning up, you said you were working on it on DTNS and the pre and post show, and you you had mentioned that it was coming and it was coming, and then finally it was like, oh, it's here, and then it was like, boom, boom. There's a couple episodes out. What was the what was the catalyst like? What, how did you choose? Okay, this is something we have to put on record and release on a regular basis, or so well, semi regular. Yeah, let's be honest. it's a really good point. So I knew nothing about podcasts really before I started with Tom, but I knew journalism mm. and Molly knew me and she put me in touch with Tom. I did that for a year and then I was like, okay, I sort of know the mechanics of podcasting now. What What is it? Like you see me on the pre and the post show in DTNS, but like I was not a technology reporter. I uh, So it wasn't my sphere of expertise. I was like, what is it I really want to talk about? And I was like, well, I could talk about movies, but that's such a space that everybody seems to be in. And, you know, I only want to do something I'm really passionate about. And I was driving home from San Francisco. Uh, and you know, when you have like one of those great trips and your mind just like opens up and you're just like, had a great time. It's all your friends you're feeling great. And I was driving home on the five and it smells like cow shit and the whole thing. And I was just like, Oh my God, I want to tell stories. And that was it. I was like, me and all my friends. I was like, the reason why Matt and I have friends and the reason why the friends we have are our friends is because they all can tell a hell of a story. And so we just started. And it was really hard for me to tell personal stories on the Internet, like really hard. And I would get like panicked and sweaty and just like freaking out. And then at some point it like all purged out. And I was just like, well, now I can talk about anything. And um it, it was just magic. And we did it like Matt and I were both sort of lightly employed for that period of time. We were able to like super devote time to it. Uh, and we just, God, we just loved doing it. It was just amazing. So we're, we'll, we, it will come back, but one of us has got to have some time off from work to do it. <sighs> uh, yeah. Uh, that's always the thing. I would podcast probably 10 times what I do now if I had just, just a little bit more time. Yeah, I I, I wouldn't. I would just be a lot better at the podcasting. I I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too. Um, oh Jackie Hearn mentions the cows in the five as well, which is funny because anytime I was driving the five, maybe maybe because I spent so much time in Indiana, there wasn't a whole lot of cow shit that would phase me so much. Mm. Um, <laughs> right. But I always remember remembered the onion smell, especially in the mm -hmm. north north end of the five, just south of the of the of the Bay Area. As you're going, yep. as you're starting to get into the valley and everything else, you can like you just farm the, uh, country. Yeah, the, this onion smell comes over you, and it, and it doesn't really go away until you start getting into like Valencia and all that area where you start hitting the citrus, and the mm -hmm. onions go away for the citrus. And I always thought it was great because I like onions and I like citrus, so it just worked out for me. Well, 
I like cow shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> that explains It's pretty it. powerful. <laughs> I would hate that drive. The the smell of onions just kills me. It uh. it like chokes me almost. It'd be like mm. it'd be like it. driving on PCH for you with the salt smell salt taste in your mouth the entire way. Oh Pacific yeah, Coast yeah, Highway? Yeah. yeah, you wouldn't like that either. That would be horrible. <laughs> Especially so, combine the two of those. Oh, I like the um. Well, if you combine onions and cow, you get like part of a delicious burger. Right. Uh, right. You just little worse your way, right? I'm a big fan of Fitz's title, uh, "Smelling the Five. <laughs> that is pretty good. I like that. Um, so you, like we said at the top of the show, you have a long history in old media and now new media, and I. I I don't know that any person's career that I personally know of and have followed for any period of time really encapsulates that that transition because you kind of went from from TV and radio, well, from radio to, to television to the like the the you know uh, working with Dan Rather and stuff like that, going into Yahoo, and then when Yahoo mm-hmm. started to uh, implode upon itself, the, <laughs> right at the beginning of its implosion period, you jumped Phew. yeah you jumped out of that and, and went straight into podcasting with Tom. Uh, by way of Molly, how was that transition for you? Like, can you take us just a little bit through that? I don't want to like make it yeah. like a, like an archive story or anything, but it, it's one of those things. Like, I I don't like not asking people about these big transitions who actually lived the transition. Yeah, it. it so all right, so I started at 21 years old. I better take a glass of water here first. Hold on. <laughs> 21 years old, working at CBS News Radio. <laughs> Full on old school journalism ended up in television on the other side of the building, um, working overnights on the foreign desk. And, um, I was there, uh, doing an overnight shift one morning in September in 2001. And I was just finished with the eight o'clock live shot and our entire world changed forever. Like it, it, it was just, I mean, it was just, defining and I'll never forget it. And it broke me in many ways, the way it broke ir- irreparably the people that were directly affected by it. But, um, sort of shortly after that, I ended up out in California, um, because in some ways New York broke for me. I don't know. It, it, it's a wonderful city and it has recovered beautifully, but like, Oh God. Anyway, sorry, that's sad. Um, <laughs> so I came out to, uh, California and I worked for CBS news out here and had a blast doing like old school, traditional go out of the field, fires, floods and earthquakes and celebrity trial journalism. And then I did that and it, it felt to me like there wasn't anywhere to go from the job I had and loved. And, and I, it was one of those classic situations where I loved the job I was doing, but I probably had grown all I could in that job. I didn't really love the next job up the chain, which was like sort of more of a in the office job, which was like producing stuff for the weekend news. I wanted to be out there doing stuff. And it was one of those things that if I had been like in one other job before CBS, I would have known that I could just leave and go somewhere else. But I was a CBS baby. So they basically had to fire me out. (laughs) Which is like, it's like every time someone fires me, they cry <laughs> because like, it, it just seems like, cause I really like all the people I work with and I still like them all to this day. Um, and so then I found myself working for Dan Rather on his show and like, not no joke, like three weeks after I'd left CBS news, I was 3000 or 4,000 feet up Mount hood on a snow cat. In like a giant jumpsuit, like on Mount Hood, I was like, "This is the best." And then I went to India, met the Dalai Lama with Dan, and it it just like like it was just great. It was exactly what I needed at that time. So that was sort of like the peak of old media. Then like the global recession happened, and I ended up working as an art history researcher for some people down in Orange County, um, which was totally off the path of my career. But it was like. We do what we have to when the world is falling apart. Then somehow, like, it was like a friend of a friend email, and I ended up at Yahoo, and I was like, like, you know, there's like this wave where money meets ambition in any, in any workforce. And if you can time it right, if your surf, your little career surfboard is in position right when the money crests on the ambition, 
man, you go for a ride. And that's what happened to me at Yahoo. And I got to go everywhere and do everything and really put together all the skills that had been coming to me in little pieces um, uh, all throughout my career and just like produce some really great stuff with a, a bunch of tremendously talented people. And then that wave crested and again, like out uh, and on to this incredibly well-timed moment where there was this guy, Tom Merritt, who needed a little help on the podcast that he had no money to pay anyone on. And I was like, well, I got severance. <laughs> so, <laughs> I came and I showed up at, at, at Tom's you know, house one day. And then I was doing the podcast and, and we did that for like two and ch- two years and change. And it was amazing. It was just amazing. And like I learned, it's funny. I'll tell you a story and I'm sorry I'm talking so long, but um, <clears throat> just sure. today I ended up doing on, on marketplace tech, this little segment they have called Silicon tally where they, it was like the host, like you guys, everybody picks a number and you try to quiz each other on what that number is. And, you know, I, I, I happened to wake up at 4.30 in the morning and saw the email that they, like, needed somebody to do it. And I, like, did my little prep. And I went into the Daily Tech News show rundown and pulled some numbers. And, like, you know, and, and I realized, and I, I did the segment, and I think it came out really well. And I, I realized, like, that's all Tom. Like, I learned everything from Tom Merritt about how to talk about technology and how to understand it in context and perspective. And... You know, like that has been the defining moment of my career, I think, so far is being at a two person company, just like making a go of it. And I loved every second. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. That sort of takes me almost up to uh, uh, to present day. (laughs) And and then uh, another great opportunity came up and you joined Marketplace. Yeah. And that was hard because, like, look. I'm sorry. I was working a podcast in my own office, like doing the like with people I really liked and and really enjoyed it. But uh, there was more learning to be done and a different kind of learning and going into an industry that I had grown up in without actually being a part of. And that and also to get to work with Molly, um, that was just a chance I couldn't pass up, but it's like wrenching. And I still help behind the scenes at Daily Tech News Show. Like if Tom and I meet, we talk, you know, I'm always there if they need me. But uh, I just, I, I really needed to try to conquer a little bit of radio. And it, and it actually ended up working out for Roger because he kind of stepped up into yeah. a role at a time when he needed to step up into a role. So Right. And, and the thing about Roger is like Roger is Tom's born producer. Like he is born to be that producer because they have the same brain. Right. Like like they can they can like if, if there's a tech podcast, a version of finishing each other's sentences, that's what they do. Mm. Right. And that's what you need as the day, the producer of the Daily Tech News Show. My job was always like come up with a weird idea to make to do something fun and different and whatever. I can still do that for that show. And I love doing that for that show. And uh, that's like a goal that I also want to get back to is like a little more weird and crazy ideas that they can do um, to sort of get other people to know about them. Mm. You know, like it's a big deal. This show daily tech news show is going into its fourth year of podcasting independently crowdfunded by all of you. And I'll tell you what, like that is a real accomplishment. Oh yeah, yeah. Tom is he is the hero of all of us. <laughs> like mm-hmm. he's really amazing. So to wrap up the history of Jenny Josephson Josephson <laughs> segment, I, I I've got one Jenny final question is. for you, and this is going to take you all the way back to the beginning Uh-oh. of your career when you were four <laughs> years old. Ah! So what happened the the first time you, I guess the first time you helped your dad at the studio? Mm-hmm. What happened? So there's a great picture of it online, which you can find, I think, um, uh, if you Google around. And uh, the clip of it is on my is on SoundCloud. Um, but, I, you know, my dad would just have me in the radio station and my mom would be like sitting in the back. And it was just sort of like a real casual atmosphere. And, you know, it was the 80s. It wasn't the 60s. Obviously, I'm not that old. Um, but it was like a, it was actually if I was four, it was like 1980. And uh, and so. Uh, I 
totally messed up the call sign. I called it WBAT, not WBAI, and I put it in Florida instead of uh, New York. Uh, but yeah, that was my debut on radio. If you go to SoundCloud, my SoundCloud, uh, you can find it. And uh, yeah, so I've been doing radio since I was four. My dad would have me on to talk about cats or movies or something like all throughout growing up. Um, and and he's still at it. That's the amazing thing. Like he runs this uh, radio studio out of our third bedroom. That's where we taped the tell it anyway that we did. And uh, he's 77 years old, I think. Is he 76, 77? Alec Baldwin tapes his podcast out of my dad's place. Like, it's pretty cool. Anyway, I'm going to shut up. This is so boring listening to me talk about my history. <laughs> Definitely uh, not. I, I'm enjoying that. I know Amos is, and I'm sure our audience is, is just loving this. This is great. I've seen no Zs in the chat room. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm going to put them in there. Z. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> So let's let's change it up, Jenny. I want to I want to try a new bit idea that All right. I came Kent, up with. Kent is our bit guy. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that, yeah, that's all I'm good for. I'm just you know, bit guy. Uh, so anyway, Jenny, I'm I'm sure with with uh, how much you love conversation and and hanging out with people, I'm sure you're familiar with with the um, I guess we could call it a locker room game of fuck one, marry one, kill one. Right, 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 right. Right. All right. So I came up with. We're, we're not going to play that. We're not playing that. No, 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 we're not playing that. <laughs> but I came up with a variation. Because I would answer it and then get fired. <laughs> I came up with a variation just for our our nerd, our nerd audience and our our nerd guests that we have on, and I called it "Become One, Befriend One, Fight One." Cool. So. Basically, I, I take a like a particular genre of fiction, and I name three characters, and then you have to decide which one you would want to be, which one you would pick to be your friend, and mm -hmm. then which one that you would choose to fight. Okay. And you are well known to be a Star Wars fan, mm -hmm. so I have three Star Wars characters. Okay. And they are Mara Jade, uh -huh. Ahsoka Tano, and Leia Organa. Oh, man! Well, there's no <laughs> other choice in the world but for me to be Princess Leia Organa. Like, I basically, every brunette girl of a certain age is has that in her DNA. So there's just no question. Um, I would like to befriend uh, later years Ahsoka Tano because uh, she's a little annoying in her backpack phase. Uh, <laughs> but then again, I was a summer camp counselor, so... Maybe I could have managed it. Uh, and then I guess that leaves me no choice but to fight Mara Jade with the <laughs> full understanding that I would totally lose. <laughs> and uh, oh, to well, answer the well, unspoken but, question, uh, Ewan McGregor, Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> Say no more. All right, there, there you go. And here's a little something from Waffles for that segment. You've got 60 seconds. Get your mind right. It's time for Hot Takes on the Ritual Misery Podcast. <laughs> so next time I'll play that beforehand because uh, okay. I saw this little thing in there uh, about the time that Kent started. And it was a little late. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, to, welcome to live TV, folks. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, a few more things. Now, we, we got about... Uh, about 10, 15 minutes left, and we, we got a few things to cover left. Um, first of all, did you see the story about the hacked radio stations? What was this? Okay, so uh, 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 radio stations of many eastern states were hacked over the weekend to play an uncensored, ex aggressively anti-Trump -tra rap song. The song looped for up to 20 minutes in some places, shorter than that in most. The hackers apparently hijacked the station's barracks x streamer device that transmits audio over ip and doesn't have security built in as a default i think so without getting political uh mostly because i can't um mm -hmm. <laughs> being, being a military Aim in man, there yeah um i think this is one of those ingenious things first of all you're blasting a message out to a whole bunch of people that probably don't want to hear it because uh, a lot of these were southern states that are heavily republican based but to I mean, they had to have had some kind of knowledge to this because it's been rolling around the country. One station played it for like 
over hours on the night of the inauguration. So I, I just like this is like pirate radio tapped into other places. And I think, man, this is this is really interesting to have a, a major broadcast tower that can be taken over by an unsecured device via the Internet. I mean, is there no two factor authentication? <laughs> like what's going on? <laughs> This reminds me of the the well in, in the analog version when the TV station was taken over by the Max Headroom right weird mm. thing. I don't remember all the details about it, but it's like just the weirdest thing. This guy just basically hacked it analog, hacked into the television signal and just took it over. This sounds like the new like the new school version of that. I thought you were going to talk about the uh what, what was that show where a uh, movie where uh Dave Chappelle and 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 uh, oh, was it Dave Chappelle? I don't know. It was like three stoners went in and took took over a radio station. I, oh yeah. What? Oh yeah. That was uh, yeah. I don't remember what it was. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was Chappelle. <laughs> yeah. That show <laughs> makes me laugh. Was like every Jason time. London involved somehow? <laughs> Probably. I oh, it's been way too long since I've seen uh, whatever. And, <laughs> and, and and here here we all like all three of us uh, on Dave Chappelle. <laughs> Right, <laughs> somebody is in that movie. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, it, it was just I, I heard that, and it could have been anything. I, it, I think the 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 Trump thing, the anti-Trump message, was just the circumstance of the time. It this is like one of those things that was bound to happen eventually because of the hardware in, involved. I'm surprised it took this long to actually happen. Hmm. I I thought it was immensely interesting. And we haven't heard anything out of the White House about it, which I think is also interesting just because of the avid Twitter sphere that the president likes to maintain. There's just there's so much that that's probably just swept under the like uh, it's lost in the shuffle because there's so many other things. Uh, That might be true. Yeah. News is basically approaching. I heard Lawrence Tribe say somewhere. I forget where it was, but like news is basically approaching critical mass of a black hole. Like it's just happening so fast. Like we're just on yeah. event horizon, just like swirling around trying not to go down the tubes. It's it's really something. Just let alone what is the news is is just like the speed at which it is all unfolding is yeah. has is unprecedented really since two thousand and one to two thousand and three for me. I gotta be honest, that's kinda how I feel about good television these days. Well that too, yeah. It's Oh you know, yeah, especially now that I've officially cut the cord since I moved up here to Alaska. Like we don't have cable at all, and it seems mm-hmm. like I ca- I don't I can't get enough streaming services or enough time to watch all the awesome shows that. Yeah, I have I have choice paralysis often <laughs> because there's just so much content. Yeah, yeah. Here here I am. I can't. Oh even my finish. God, Jackie Hearn, Airheads. Ah, uh, there we go. <laughs> yes, thank you, Jackie. There we go. Yes. That's why we have a Jackie Hearn. Right, because she's amazing. That's why. <laughs> Holy crap. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, by all means. Um, and uh, so the last thing I want to say, and this is a little bit of a, a, a more of an opinion piece. There's a bunch of refugees suing a school district, schooling the Lancaster, Pennsylvania school district, because apparently they have all their special needs classes in one school to include all their truancies and, and, and all that kind of stuff. All their special needs are in one school. These refugees came from several different countries in Africa. I, I believe all of them were from Africa, but I'm, maybe not. And they're all, they, they packed them into this one school. Now the refugees are suing the school district saying they're getting a subpar education. And my first thought of that was if you're a refugee and you come here and you have to eat at McDonald's, you're not pissed off that you don't get to go to the you know Outback Steakhouse. But the more I read into it, the more just kind of crazy the whole situation seems. And I took it into perspective. Like, if my first thought was, quit bitching, you're refugees. Like, you should just be happy you're here. And I kind of had to put myself in check. It, it kind of gave me a different perspective as, a, as I read all these Twitter tweets and everything else from people that are kind of going off the hip. And, man, that was one of those. It wasn't a, a big life change, but it was definitely something that opened my eyes just a little bit about myself and how I read things. Um, and well, uh Go ahead. No, you go ahead. You finish your thought, and then I have I have thoughts. Um, I I just I wanted to hear. I want this is weird, but but I wanted to know like if you guys have had any of those recent moments lately. Because I know, well, I mean, Kent, you haven't been able to say either way because of your job. 
and I can't say any more, but um, I read a, a certain Medium post recently by one Jenny Josephson that, that clearly states... Oh, my God, you guys are literally going to get me fired. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> um, I, I know you've got some opinions on, on the whole thing, and I just wonder, have you had a moment like that where you read something else, you had a reaction, and then you almost immediately, like, realize that your reaction was was off well hmm. i don't have opinions i'm a journalist (laughs) Uh, (laughs) uh, what's what's the best way to put this i found out a long time ago and this is one of the great things about working in journalism is the best part of the job is how many different people that you get to talk to who have every different opinion from you in the world and uh you know i grew up on the upper west side of new york i live moving california like i'm that typical urban coastal elite asshole that 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 you have every right to dislike you know without knowing me um but i I have found that the best remedy to opinions about people i don't know is to go talk to them and to listen to their stories. And the fact, frankly, that you could do that exercise remotely and to like actually put yourself in the shoes of those people and read up more about it and 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 think it through is really admirable, right? You're you're basically having empathy for people that you don't know who aren't like you. And that's I mean, we could all use a lot more of that right now. Um but but what I will say is the best remedy ever for feeling a, a certain way about a certain type of person is to go talk to those people, right? Like, I, I, you know, I worked in 2008 for evangelical Christian conservatives doing art history research who we did not share a single belief in common. In fact, like we had no shared experiences together. It was the most challenging time in my life because uh, we did not share almost any values, but they were smart. They made me laugh. They were intelligent. They just believed different things things than me and to have had that exposure was incredibly valuable and and really helped me understand that just because someone believes a different thing with all of their heart does not mean they're deserving of hatred and 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 that's the best thing I can do is just listen so there you go there's my screed Uh, 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 awkwardly that's exactly what I got from your medium post so (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh my god i'm taking down all my medium posts like, immediately are, are you kidding you, you can't do that i haven't uh, finished reading them uh they're amazing okay. I, i'd never read them until today and, and then, right now yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, yeah yeah just listen anyway there you go jackie hearn just nailed it um <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh we there's one last thing that we need to do tonight that uh, we haven't mentioned a certain topic that is a bit of a, a favorite of yours Yes. And that is uh, baseball. Oh, man. So so we, we did our digging. We went way back, way back. And Kent, is it my turn to read this week? I think it is. It is. Okay. It is okay. your turn. Um, we went way back, and we, we might have talked to some, uh, some old friends of yours about, <gasps> um, about some, some, some life goals that you had and some dreams and some memories of when you were little. And I'm going to read a little thing, a little, little paragraph. I believe you wrote this to a friend, uh, a, like a pen pal when you were, when you were really little, but I'm going to go ahead and read it out and you can tell us just how accurate it is. And if you still feel this way about, about okay. baseball. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. Baseball is so much fun. I play in the local heritage league on a team that's called the radio stations. We practice 17,000 times a week. And everyone gets to take a turn podcasting the ball. Last Saturday, we had our first game against the Numbers, who are from Florida. It was awesome. I played 77th base, and when Shyamalan came to bat, I caught 
the event horizon and tagged them out. Everyone was cheering, cow shit. And then it was our turn at bat. I got up and stood at home plate, swung the radio, and fuck, a home run. I purged, <laughs> purged around the bases as literally as I could. And then I slid into goal. It was the most evangelical game I ever played. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was amazing. Do I get that on, like, like, like a framed thing somewhere? Like, can someone send me that? Because that is incredible. Oh, my God. We might be able to do something about that. Just like, uh. an e like a PDF. Just send me a PDF because that, that was awesome. So, um, so is that is that still how you feel about baseball? The, you know, yes, that's, that's, yeah. <laughs> yes. That's uh, I mean, out question. Seventeen like, thousand times like, a week. Oh no, they got the wrong Jenny. <laughs> <That's so embarrassing. laughs> My favorite part was fuck a home run. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Uh, seventeen thousand times a week. That's a lot of practice. That <laughs> is, man, that's a lot. You of You have practice. to be on the event horizon to do that. <laughs> yeah, you got to you got a oh, time God. shift and everything else. So, uh, Jenny, where can people find you if they okay. want to know more about you or or track down some of your content? Uh, so I'm going to tell you all the things. Uh, <laughs> so get ready. Get your pens and pencils. Okay. Um, right now, once a month, Garrett Weinzer, old Tom Merritt, and I are doing Let's Talk About Star Wars, which is just, with the exception of this show, the most fun podcast that I do. Um, and I'm always there and, and, and cause it's once a month. And so I'd be a real jerk if I couldn't make it for that. Uh, <laughs> and if you've never listened to tell it anyway, uh, please go to tell it anyway.com and just take a listen to any random episode because basically my husband and I have poured out our hearts and souls and all of our friends. And I don't know if you guys watch Westworld, uh, but the guy who plays Sylvester, uh, one of the body techs on Westworld is a dear friend of ours, and we got him telling an amazing story. His name's Ptolemy Slocum. Um, we 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 just have all sorts of really fascinating people, uh, and and that show's coming back. We just literally have to do it. But the the number one thing I want to say most is uh, I did start uh, producing this podcast at Marketplace called uh, um, Make Me Smart, and I couldn't be more proud of it. Uh, you go to marketplace.org slash make me smart, sign up for it on your podcatchers, wherever you get your own, R, roll your own RSS feed. Um, and it, it is just really promising. That's what I'll say. It's really promising. It's, it's really um, high level, tight wire, what, what, tight rope walk. Yeah. Tight rope walk podcast <laughs> of just like two smart people talking about stuff. So, yeah. And in true uh, uh, Mollywood fashion, it was originally supposed to be like a, a short form podcast, yep. and it's it's always yep. like thirty minutes. So totally not. <laughs> <laughs> um, once, you get, once you get those guys talking, they just don't stop. Yeah, and they've so got go they ahead. got great chemistry and everything else. And if you miss the old days of Buzz Out Loud, and you would just want to hear some Molly just be herself and not have to go, like I said, unscripted. There it is. That's just Molly, and it's a great show. I'm I'm already hooked. Like I heard the 2.5 today on the way home from work. Yeah, because they they had to make an addendum to episode two. Uh, yep. Because <laughs> basically Molly's right. And um... <laughs> <laughs> I know the whole premise of the 2.5 episode was Kai Rizdal wanted to do that episode. He's the one who suggested it because he was like, I need the world to know how right Molly Wood was. And I was like, Is this not the best, dude? Come on. <laughs> That's like awesome. You know, like when you call one and you're like a day ahead of the entire rest of the world make, mm. making a point. And that's why we did that 2.5 was that was it. Yeah. And that's the kind of like little tiny bit of fun that we get to have um, while we're talking about some pretty serious stuff and stuff that people, um, you know, want to know more about. And so the other thing about it is in true debt, in true debt to the Buzz Out Loud uh, ethos and that ethos, which has trickled down through all the podcasts up until Daily Tech News Show, right until this show, you know, it is very much going to be driven by our listeners. Mm -hmm. We want you guys to send us audio files. We want you to to answer our make me smart question. Like we want your expertise on the show. This is like straight out of the playbook. Okay, of all the podcasts you know, except this one, it is 
done by public radio. That's it. That's the difference. And no chat room yet. I'm working on it, people. Uh, I'm working on it. Yeah, you know, that's it's not so hard to hurt, to help out with. Oh, I'm uh, working. <clears throat> so, uh, but we do do Facebook live videos. And you said do do. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Mollywood and, and uh, they they're doing um they're doing live Facebook videos, interactive to get um get people to submit ideas, answer questions, submit questions. And also, th there's great interviews on there. Like these are amazing raw uh, interviews with people that yeah. really add to. to if the you whole haven't heard the one question with Norman Lear, did you hear that? Mm. Holy cow! Yeah. Yeah. We asked Norman Lear uh, what was something he thought he knew that he was wrong about. And this is the guy that created like Maud and All in the Family and the Jeffersons and One Day at a Time and all this stuff. Right. And his answer had us all like he knocked us to the floor and that's on episode two it is worth just for that alone going to listen especially you guys with all the service that you've given to our country like it is just it's knockout i was i was actually driving to my wife's work to pick her up for for to go home for the day uh passing alaska command headquarters because mm. it's the building right next to hers when when i was hearing that story i was sitting at the stop sign waiting for that episode to finish so i go park the truck and and go get my wife so a uh, great episode great story holy cow i want to hear the rest of that holy one. cow <clears throat> yeah um, hey kent uh it's about that time to wrap up man where can people find you if they want to reach out and ignore you yeah <laughs> right exactly just find me on twitter i'm at rm underscore del noche uh also if you're a beer guy like me i am del noche on untapped oh yeah yeah he's he's all about the beer um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, of course, you can find me, Ethan Kane. You can find the show at Ritual Misery. You can cruise on over to ritualmisery.com and find all the other things there. I promise, 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 by the time we hit South by, we will have new swag up. Uh, I got to find a spreadsheet alternative because that, that, that site just kills me every day. Um, all that being said, uh, we want to give a spe special thanks to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your theme music. And. Um, Waffles for, for giving us the other music and Jotmon for the intro video. This has been your Ritual Misery podcast with the one, the only Jenny Joseph. Whoa! <laughs> That's great music. That uh, that didn't go how it was supposed to go. <laughs> it's really great, though. It's supposed to go. Uh, yeah. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>